morning. Today I'm at the Art Institute of Chicago and I'm going to go look at the Whistler and Roussel show here. So let's go inside and take a look. The Art Institute's show, Whistler and Roussel, Linked Visions, is composed of 175 etchings, lithographs, drawings, and paintings by James McNeil Whistler, Theodore Roussel, and other artists in their artistic community. In 1885, after seeing Roussel's watercolor, The Thames Embankment, in London, Whistler sought an introduction to Roussel, the French-born printmaker and painter, 13 years younger than Whistler. At the time, Whistler was already a well-known artist, and Roussel was just beginning to exhibit in London. Once the artists met in 1887, they quickly formed an artistic relationship and worked side by side for over a decade. Both artists were interested in depicting street scenes and riverscapes in London, especially in Chelsea, where they both lived. The two artists often depicted corresponding subjects, such as Whistler's transfer lithograph, Maunder's Fish Shop of 1890, and Roussel's etching of the same subject, The Little Fish Shop, Chelsea Embankment, of around 1888. In addition to local outdoor scenes, the two artists both portrayed nude and draped figures. After Roussel finished his most well-known painting, The Reading Girl, of around 1886, of a nude and seated model reading, Whistler created his own lithographic version and Little Nude Model Reading, of around 1888. In the 1890s, the two artists likely worked side by side at times. This can be seen in Whistler's draped figure reclining of 1892 and Roussel's study from the nude woman asleep of 1890 to 94. Whistler and Roussel also had linked ideas about the presentation of their works. Whistler had strong opinions on the scale of his prints and the frames that he exhibited them in. He preferred small etching plates and liked to leave only a small margin at the bottom edge for his signature, which he believed forced the viewer to focus on the image. He also considered the frame an extension of the work. Like the Pre-Raphaelites, Whistler valued craftsmanship and often designed his own frames. Roussel adopted many of these ideas, exhibited his works in the same way, and like Whistler, began making his own frames. The two artists also shared models for many of their projects. They often used three sisters, Harriet, who modeled for The Reading Girl, Lillian, and Rose Pettigrew. Arriving in London with their widowed mother, looking for work, the three sisters began their career by sitting for the pre-Raphaelite artist John Everett Millay, and were soon sitting for other artists too. Whistler employed all three sisters, Roussel, who hired Harriet, or Hetty, as his main model. The two artists continued working closely, creating similar projects and exploring lithography through the early 1890s, until Whistler moved to Paris in 1892. Whistler would die in 1903, and Roussel would continue to explore color printmaking while working with the next generation of artists.